Every major film and almost every television show is either shot on 24 FPS film or 24p HD video. It's exotic, the frame rate of Hollywood, and suddenly everybody wanted it because they wanted to shoot movies instead of just videos. But if you don't know what different frame rates do for you, it's easy to get confused. Out there on the wilds of the internet, there's a lot of conflicting and just plain bad information. We're here to help you separate the good from the bad and get you started on the right track. We assume you're here because you want to shoot 24p, so that'll be our focus. But we'll also discuss what makes a frame rate a frame rate, why different frame rates are useful, and how to choose a frame rate. Then we'll talk about 24p specifics, like how to shoot it, what pull down is all about, editing your footage, and finally, export. So we've got a lot of ground to cover. Let's start by tackling a few of the misconceptions. Mr. Cadence, I believe you were hired to shoot me. Take a number, Miss... Mrs. Samples. Perhaps you've heard of my husband, Manny? Oh, yeah. He's a big wheel down at the TV factory. I hear his operations quite the laundry. We designed this sketch specifically to address some of the most persistent objections to shooting 24p. First and foremost among them is the idea that frame rate doesn't matter and that only lighting and filmmaking technique do. Our characters looked like they were in totally different productions, didn't they? But they weren't. They were on the same set, in the same room, with the same basic lighting scheme and production design. But the only difference between them is that we shot her at 60p rather than 24p, like we shot Mr. Cadence. Let's look at how the difference disappears if she had been shot at 24p all along. Mr. Cadence, I believe you were hired to shoot me. Take a number, Miss... Mrs. Samples. Perhaps you've heard of my husband, Manny? Oh, yeah. He's a big wheel down at the TV factory. I hear his operations quite the laundry. See? Totally different feel. They're suddenly part of the same world. And the only difference is the frame rate. Not the lighting, not the production, but the frame rate. Keep that in mind and you're ready to understand why. Faster frame rates are about smoothness. At 24 frames per second, there can be a bit of a stutter to the movement. You can see it. It still looks like smooth motion, but it's clearly different from 60. If you shoot something at 24 frames per second, in picture one, a moving object or person is here. In the next picture, 1 24th of a second later, it's here, and then it's here. If you shot the same thing at 60 frames per second, you're taking a lot more pictures a lot closer together. Instead of the object starting here and then moving to here, we can see the object here, but then it's also here, here, and here before it gets all the way to here. A faster frame rate gives you smoother looking motion because each picture hangs less and each object moves less. And you get to see the object in more places within the image, so your brain can interpret things more smoothly. Original video cameras worked in the same 60 Hz power standard and they were also interlaced. Their sensors were read 60 times per second. The sensors didn't image whole progressive frames, like progressive cameras do now. They imaged interlaced fields, just like the TV displayed. It's not doing this 30 times per second and splitting the 30 pictures up into fields. It's doing this 60 times per second, and every single time, it's a new image. A half image, maybe, but look, you can still make out a coherent picture. Every time a new field is created, it's taken at a different time from the field before it and the field after it. It's a different moment in time from field to field. You can take one field and then lace it together with the next field, but you immediately see the problem. There was motion between the times the fields were imaged. A very fast shutter speed doesn't expose for long and it doesn't let in a lot of light, so you need a lot of very bright light in order to have enough for a good picture. And footage shot at a very fast shutter will have less motion blur than a slower shutter. While a frame rate is about the motion of objects from picture to picture, objects are still moving while each picture is taken. So fast moving objects will have a blur in each picture. A fast exposure means less motion, so less blur. Less blur can mean more apparent stutter. This is not nearly to the same effect as the difference between frame rates, but faster shutters will make footage look more staccato, and slower shutters will make the motion appear a little bit smoother. If you like 30p and you are using it because that's what you want, then that's great. But if what you want is 24p and you're choosing 30 because it's less of a hassle? <laughs> well, we all know that the basis of all great art is easier math. <laughs> 
If you edit all the footage on a 60 timeline, you will be editing your 24p footage with pull down in it. If it's not already in the footage, the editing software will add it to conform it to the timeline. You won't be cutting on clean 24p frame lines. You'll either have repeated progressive frames or you'll be working with interlaced fields. If you work in the native frame rate, you'll have clean cuts on the original frame lines. But the bigger issue is that when you edit on a 60 timeline and render out from a 60 timeline, anything you add will be rendered as 60 and will contrast with the 24p footage. Take these cross dissolves from the opening sketch. These were edited on a 24p timeline and rendered as 24p before we brought it into the 60p timeline. The dissolves were rendered as 24p, so they match the 24p footage. If we hadn't done it that way, if we had edited and rendered as 60p, they would have looked different and would have clashed with the underlying 24p footage. Some frame rates cannot be converted well to each other. You can't convert 30p to 24p well because there just isn't enough difference between the rates to make a good conversion. You can't just drop frames at regular intervals like you can with 60. You'll end up with gaps which create weird jumps. You can try to resample instead, but you'll have to blend frames and then you'll end up with moving objects having ghosting or double images around them. Similarly, you can't put 24p into a 30p stream because there's no pull-down pattern which will give you a smooth motion. And if you resample, you'll get the same kind of ghosting. 24p and 30p simply do not convert well to each other. 